417. Methodology and African Prehistory Who, in 1919, when he was director of the Uganda Geological Service, noticed there the sort of chipped pebbles that had been discovered in Ceylon before 1914. In 1920 he invented the terms pebble culture and Kafu on culture the latter from the name of the river Kafu, and by 1934 had distinguished for successive stages. It was Wayland who in 1936 suggested Old Owen as a name for the advanced pebble culture of the Old Away Gorge in Tanzania. In 1952 Van Riet Lowe attempted the first technical and morphological classification of the pebble culture. But it was from H. Movie used, and from Asia, that the first real definition of forms came, in 1944, with the introduction of the terms chopper, chopping tool and hand axe. Gradually the prehistorians of all Africa, though not always those of Europe, were convinced, Algeria C. Amberge Morocco P. Biverson the Sahara H. Hugot, H. The HMEN, J. Chabalone Shab Mortalmans and so on. Morphological classifications based on chipping techniques were put forward by such experts as L. Romano and P. Biberson. TWO things emerged immediately. First, the pebble culture was too complex, with forms too varied, rigid and systematic, to represent the actual beginning of stone industries. Secondly, the pebble culture contained, in potential, all the possibilities which would lead to the classic biface and hand axe industries of the Lower Paleolithic in Africa. W. E. shall dwell on the first point only. Because of the complexity of the pebble culture and its distribution, the prehistorians of Africa wished to establish a longer chronology than that, itself arrived at with such difficulty, which allocated a million years to the quaternary. The H. E. dating of the old away industry by the potassium argon method 1850,000 to 1100,000 years for bed 1 was backed up first by the dating of the OM though chopping tool between 21000 and 2,500,000 and soon after by that of the site at Lake Urkana to 600,000. But this last, though it did include a great number of chipped pebbles, did not all belong to the pebble culture. It was an industry of fragments. In 1972 other fragments, perhaps less conclusive ones, were found at OMO. One may therefore wonder whether the fashioning of pebbles into pebble tools was not preceded by the use of fragments knocked off some block of raw material. But at that point W.E. come to the last possible non-natural explanation, if the marks of working are not clear, if W.E. have to put the emphasis on improvement. W.E. come face to face once more with the old problem of Eolus. So we come to what is inexplicable except by the intervention of a hot minute. But then where do we stop? The boldest limit has been reached by Louis Leakey. W.H.O. attributes bone bashing activities to Ken Yipipikus, suggesting that he employed a lump of love battered and bruised by use, and a long bone with a depressed fracture. 19. At this point, that their origin the problem of the bone industry and that of the stone industry become the same. Then though further technological or morphological proof is possible, there is no classic mark of human action. 19. L.S. V. Leakey, 1968. 418. Hominization, General Problems. The H.E. only positive argument is in fact the inexplicable presence of flakes with the remains of Ken Yipipikus, but even I elusive not to re a sport of nature is eliminated, that does not rule out the possibility of use by some pre-hominid anthropoid. The SWE have seen, the observed behavior of chimpanzees in a way support such a possibility. For the prehistorians of Africa, the tools of bone and stone bear witness to a cerebral process of hominization that was in progress two and a half million years ago. But that was not WHE then it began. Glossary. The Bavilion Industrial Complex defined by H. Brahe at Apiphil, in the SOMMB Valley, northern France. It is characterized by the existence of bifacial tools which have been chipped with a hard hammer stone to remove large blanks. This complex was defined in Europe, where it corresponds to the beginning of the Lower Paleolithic. See also Sherlene. The Shulin from Seine to Chul, in the SOMMB Valley, northern France. This is the main cultural complex of the Lower Paleolithic and it lasted from the middle glaciation to the end of the Rhys Worm interglacial stage. The most typical feature is a bifacial tool that is more regular than the abathillion and is chipped with a soft hammer made of wood or handler. 
Aenio lithic from the Latin Aeneas, bronze, and the Greek lithos, stone. Prehistoric period in which copper was first used. Amazonite a green-colored variety of microline. Amerian Moroccan continental cycle contemporary with the Mindel stage in Europe. Anthadian from Anthat, in Morocco. The third quaternary marine transgression in Morocco. A.T. written from Per El Aeter, in eastern Algeria. North African Paleolithic industry between the Moosterian and the Capsian. It consists of tanged points and scrapers and a few filiate points. The H.E.A.T. written developed throughout part of the W.U.R.M. period and is probably partly contemporary with the Upper Paleolithic in Europe. Atlanthropus fossil of the Archanthropus group defined by C. Their Aberge at the Turnitfine site in Algeria. The remains are dated to the end of the lower Pleistocene. Augite natural silicate of calcium, magnesium and iron entering into the composition of basalt. Horognation from Horognac, on the upper Garonne, France. Prehistoric industry dating from the beginning of the lower Paleolithic. This name, which was coined by H. Brahe and E. Cartail Hawk in 1906, is used to designate industries that are situated chronologically between the Moosterian and the Perigordian. It is characterized by reindeer antler spearheads, thick scrapers, long blades with 419. Methodology and African prehistory. Continuous flat and flaky retouching, and some buren chisels. It witnessed the emergence of the first works of art, consisting of rudimentary animal figurines and summarily engraved signs on limestone blocks. It is dated to some 30,000 years ago. Australopithecus from the Latin Australis, Southern, and the Greek Pithecos, Monkey. Genus name coined by Dart in 1924 to designate several fossils from South Africa displaying simian characteristics but heralding some human features. Similar discoveries were subsequently made in Eastern and Southern Africa. Basalt of volcanic rock. By face the stone tool chipped away on both faces to produce an almond shape. They were first called choppers and then hand axes, and seem to have been used for cutting purposes and, to a lesser extent, for scraping. They are the typical tools of the lower Paleolithic. Brecci a rock of regular stones cemented together by lime etc. Calabrian from Calabria, southern Italy. The H.E. oldest stage of the marine quaternary identified by M. Ginu in 1910. Calcite a crystallized natural carbonate of calcium found in chalk white marble, limestone, alabaster, etc. Capsi and from Capsa, the Latin name for Gafsa, in southern Tunisia. Late Paleolithic African industry identified by J. D. Morgan. Upper Paleolithic tools are found in association with a large number of microliths and small thick borers which were probably used for drilling holes in ostrich eggshell fragments to make necklaces. It is dated to about 11,000 years ago. Carnelian Red Chalcedony Cortarines Old World Monkeys, with 32 teeth and a narrow septum. Cenozoic synonym for tertiary and quaternary, starting with the Eocene 65 million years ago and followed by the Oligocene 40 million years ago, the Miocene 25 million years ago, the Pliocene 11 million years ago, the Pleistocene, and the recent period. Sarcothiophysus from the Greek Kirkos, tail, and Pithecos, monkey. The An African long tailed monkey. Chabnathropus Chabman. Hominid fossil situated anatomically between the Australopithecus and the Ichanthropus stages. Chalcedony a fibrous variety of silica composed of quartz and opal. Cherline from Chelles, France. Industrial complex of the Lower Paleolithic described by G. D. Mortalit. Former name of the Abedillion. Claptonian from Clapton on Sea, Great Britain. Lower Paleolithic industry described by H. Brahe in 1932 and characterized by flint lakes with a smooth and 420. Hominization, general problems. Broad striking surface. The H.E. Claptonian appears to be contemporary with the Acheulean. Cleaver massive blade tool with a sharp cutting edge produced by striking two surfaces against each other. It is typical of the African Acheulean but is also found in early and middle Paleolithic industries at several sites in southern France and Spain. Diabase rock of the Gapro and Diorite family, often green. Diorite coarse grain rock. Discoid late Acheulean disc shaped stone tool chipped on both edges. Dolerite rock of the Gapro family with the constituent minerals visible to the naked eye. 
the Essene first period of the Tertiary Era, dating to 65 to 45 million years ago. Epidote natural hydrated silicate of aluminium, calcium and iron. Forest Smith place name in the Orange Free State, South Africa. Lithic industry comprising scrapers and points with single-edge trimming, bifaces and small axes, and corresponding to the Middle Paleolithic in Europe. Galena natural sulfate of lead. Gambleon 4th African fluvial defined around Lake Nakuru, Naive Asha and Elementi Idan Canyon. Contemporary with the Vereman period, but the term is no longer used. GDNZ from the name of the river in Germany. The HE earliest quaternary alpine glaciation. Hemtite natural ferric oxide. Handaxi an almond shaped stone tool trimmed on both edges, used for digging and skinning purposes. A synonym is biface. Araunian the HE fourth quaternary marine transgression in Atlantic Morocco. Holocene the HE most recent period of the quaternary beginning 10,000 years ago. Hominid zoological family of the higher primates represented by fossil and present day man. Homogeneous name in the zoological classification given to fossil and present day man. Homo faber tool making man. Homo habilis and the ME coin by Leakey, Tobias and Napier to designate fossils whose degree of anatomical evolution stands midway between that of the Australopithecines and the Pithecanthropines. 421. Methodology and African Prehistory. Homo sapiens term coin by C. Linnaeus in 1735 and now used to designate the modern orny and thropic forms of MEN2, through intelligence, has reached the state of adaptation to the environment which enables him to think and introspect freely. ibero morusian cultural complex of the late Paleolithic and AP Paleolithic in the Maghreb, the development of which was marked by the greatly increased number of microliths and which lasted from 12000 to 7000 years ago. Jadeite natural alumino silicate of sodium, with small quantities of calcium, magnesium and iron. Jasper impure chalcedony with generally red-colored veins or patches. Kathwan from the Kafu River in Uganda. Industrial complex from the beginning of the Lower Paleolithic in East Africa, characterized by flat pebbles which have been summarily chipped but not trimmed. There is some controversy as to whether it is of human origin. Kagaran from the Kagara River in Tanzania. First African pluvial, identified by E.J. Wayland in 1934. Contemporary with the GDNZ Alpine glaciation. The term is no longer used. Kamajan from Kamazia in Kenya. Second African pluvial, commonly known as Kamajan I. Contemporary with the Mindel glaciation in Europe, but seldom used. Kanjan from Kajara in Kenya. Third African pluvial defined by L. S. B. Leaky. Commonly known as Kamaj on II. This corresponds to the period of the Ris glaciation in the Alps, but the term is no longer used. Lapis lazuli azure blue stone used in mosaics, the powdered form being used for ultramarine pigment. Laterite from the Latin later, brick. Bright red or reddish brown soil rich in iron oxide and alumina, formed by leaching in hot climates. Levelois technique from Levelois Paris, France. Stone making technique enabling large blanks of predetermined shape to be obtained from a prepared corn. Level was an industrial complex defined by H. Brahe in 1931, characterized by flanks struck from Levelois type course, with little or no subsequent trimming. It is no longer acknowledged as being a genuine industry. Luthem banned from Luthem, Kasai, Zahir. Industrial complex of the late daily Illithic. Characterized by the combined presence of massive chipped stone tools, picks and chisels and leaf points trimmed on both edges, dating from about 8,000 years before our era. Lydia Knight Hardened Shale. Maraf Diane from the Maraf, Morocco. Second Quaternary Marine Transgression of Atlantic Morocco. 422. Hominization, General Problems. Magostin from Magosi, in Uganda. Stone industry discovered by Wayland in 1926, situated between the Gambley and the Macaleen, and combining objects of Mousterian appearance such as cores, discoidals and points, fill late pieces trimmed on both edges, and geometrical microliths. Macaleen from the Macaleya River in Kenya. Wet stage of the Quaternary in Southern Africa, contemporary with the post-glacial period in Europe. Then no longer used. Malachite green colored natural base carbonate of copper. Mass Irritant first Saharan pluvial, equivalent to the Kagaran. 
mesolithic from the Greek mesos, in the middle of, and lithos, stone. This word was long used to designate all the cultural complexes which it was possible to situate between the Paleolithic and the Neolithic. These are now more commonly related to an Paleolithic stage. Mikoka prehistoric site situated to the north of Laezis, 25 kilometers to the northwest of Sarlat, in central France, which produced the Mikokian industry, a very evolved form of the Achuelian contemporary with the WURM glaciation. Mindel and the MB of the river in Bavaria. Second Quaternary Alpine Glaciation which appears to have been situated between 300,000 and 400,000 years ago. Miocene from the Greek Min, less, and Kynos, recent. In other words, it contains fewer recent forms than the system following it. It is a period of the tertiary era between 25 and 10 million years ago. Muluyan from the Muluyan Valley, Morocco. Term used by Baberson. The H. E. Middle Villa French of Morocco. Mustarian from Mustire, Dordogne, France. Prehistoric industry of the Middle Daily Illithic, which was widespread in the second half of the last interglacial period. It was identified by E. Lartet in 1865 and is characterized by the very large number of points and scrapers obtained by training flakes from only one of their faces. Math around wet stage defined by the deposits in the shoreline sediment below the 102 meter level. At Lake Nakuru, Kenya. These layers have revealed Neolithic style industries dating back some 3,000 years. Neanderthal from the name of the valley in the Dussel Basin in Germany, where the first specimen was discovered by D. R. P. H. L. Rod in 1856. Representative of a particular group of the genus Homo, which lived in Western Europe in the upper Pleistocene and died out suddenly without leaving any descendants. Neolithic from the Greek Neos, New, and Lithos, Stone. Stone Age with food production agriculture. Stock raising. Term coined in 1865 by J. Lubbock. Obsidian compact vitreous volcanic rock resembling dark colored glass. 423. Methodology and African prehistory. Old Owen from the older way Gorgon Northern Tanzania. Ancient lithic tool complex pedal tools discovered by Katwinkle in 1911. Complex in which Leakey identified 11 levels of Old Owen I corresponding to the old Sherlene, and old Dowden XI corresponding to its Leon VI, with level with the tools. Oligocene second period of the tertiary, from 45 to 25 million years ago. Osteodonto keratic prehistoric industry based on bones Greek osteon teeth Greek odus, odontos and antlers Greek keras. Keratos discovered the Makapans gap in South Africa by R. A. Dart. Ugershan I second Saharan pluvial. Equivalent to the Kamasan. Uberption II Third Saharan Pluvial, equivalent to the Kanjaron. Paleolithic from the Greek Paleos, Gold, and Lithos, Stone. Term used to designate the Stone Age with no food production. Term coined by J. Lubb in 1865. Paleozoic a synonym for primary. Paranthropus robust Australopithecus discovered in 1948 in the Pleistocene deposits at Crombre I in the Transvaal equals Zinganthropus equals Paraustralopithecus. This ancient type displays many simian characteristics but possesses, particularly in its dental structure, features which situate it closer to M the end than to the anthropoids. Pebble culture the HE oldest known stone tool making industry composed essentially of pebbles on which a cutting edge was created by striping off one or more flakes. Pit Icanthropus Monkey Man Fossil displaying features close enough to present AM the end to belong to the genus Homo, and other somewhat different characteristics representative of another species. The first specimen was discovered by E. Dubois in Java in 1889. Belongs to the species Homo erectus. Platyrine and the W world monkeys with 36 teeth and a broad septum. Pleistocene from the Greek Pleistos, much, and Kynos, recent. The geological subdivision of the Quaternary period comprising the beginning and the greater part of Hat period. This term, which was coined by C. Lyell in 1839, corresponds to the periods of the Great Quaternary glaciations and preceded the Holocene period, which started 10 years before the present. Pliocene terminal period of the tertiary era, beginning 5 to 5 million years ago and ending by 8 million years ago. Pongid family of anthropoid monkeys typified by the orangutan and also comprising the gorilla, the gibbon and the chimpanzee. 
Precambrian the oldest geological configuration. It lasted from the formation of the Earth estimated to date to 4,000 million years ago until the primary era 500 million years ago. 424. Hominization. General problems. Pre-Sultanian Moroccan continental period corresponding to the end of the Re stage and coming prior to the Sultanian from the Ares Sultan. Ramapithecus. Ramapithecus Makarai. Homogras primate of the Miocene which may be the ancestor of the hominids, dating to 12 to 14 million years ago. Discovered in the Sikhalix range in northern India. Other specimens have been found in China, Turkey, Africa Fort Ternan and Europe Austria, France, Germany, Greece, Hungary and Spain. Present the MB of the river in Bavaria. The ultimate quaternary alpine glaciation, situated between 200,000 and 120,000 years ago. Sango an eponymous site at Sango Bay on Lake Victoria in Uganda. It is a stone tool complex discovered by Wayland in 1920 and is characterized by the existence of flamed objects produced by the Levallois technique, massive points, bifacial tools and crude core axe forms. The site belongs to the period between the Kamach on and the Gambling. Satarian from Samara, Awadi in the Algerian Sahara. Fourth Saharan Pluvial, equivalent to the Gambling. Serpentine hydrated silicate of magnesium. Shale foliated silico alumina sedimentary rock breaking down easily into thin flakes. Synanthropos from the Latin sinensis, Chinese, and the Greek anthropos, man. Fossil displaying features close enough to present day man to belong to the genus Homo, and other somewhat different characteristics representative of another species. The Chao Kaosian site, southwest of Peking, was worked from 1921 to 1939 by D.R.P.I.M. Black, Father the I.L. Hard D. Churton and F. Widenreich. Belongs to the species Homo erectus. Salutrian from Salutra, Sonne et Loire, France. Prehistoric industry of the Upper Paleolithic, characterized by very thin flint blades. The H.E. typical tools owe their appearance to the fact that they were shaped by a process of flat parallel retouching which cut into the two faces of the piece. Still the E from Still Bay, Cape Province, South Africa. Stone industry rich in foliate pieces trimmed on both edges reminiscent of the laurel leaves of the French Salutrian. Contemporary with the Gambling. Tectite natural glass rich in silica and alumina, most probably of meteoritic origin. Telanthropus generic term given by Broom and Robinson to two jaw fragments found in 1949 in the Swarth K. Rans deposit in South Africa with a morphology reminiscent of Sir and Archonthropines. Tensigtheant from Wadi Tensift, in western Morocco. Moroccan continental stage corresponding to the first part of the Ris glaciation. 425. Methodology and African prehistory. Chateauline term coined to denote a stone tool complex discovered at Chatola, Kasai, Zahir. AP Paleolithic industrial complex characterized by the continued existence of massive tools although smaller in size than the Lutham band, and by the large number of arrowheads trimmed on both faces. Tough lightweight and soft porous volcanic rock. Villafrenchen from Villafranca de Stichite, Piedmont, Italy. Sedimentary formation corresponding to the transition between the tertiary and quaternary eras. Wilton from the Wilton site, in western Cape Province, South Africa. Stone industry dating to some 15,000 years ago, Consisting of small groin shaped scrapers, lunate and trapezoidal microliths, borers, and pieces with denticulate edges. This was a late culture which persisted until the introduction of iron. We're from the name of a lake and river in Bavaria. The HE most recent of the quaternary alpine glaciations, beginning 75,000 years ago and ending 10,000 years before our era. 426. Plate 17. By one of the oldest stone artifacts in the world, found on the Orno site, Ethiopia, excavations led by J. Chabalone Musée de Lyon Call. Plate 17.2 The Sikhalix Excavation, North Pakistan, excavations led by D. Pilbeam Photo H. Thomas, Musée de Lyon Call. 427. Plate 17.3 Eocene and Oligocene Sites, Fayum, Egypt Photo E. Simons, Musée de Lyon Call and dollars H and S 3 H K. Plate 17 point for reconstruction of the environment at Fayum 40 million years ago. Drawing by Gaylar and Burton in Musée de Lyon Call. 
428. Plate 17.5 skulls of Australopithecus robustus on the right Australopithecus gracilis on the left photo J. Robinson. Museum de Leon Call. Plate 17.6 Skull of Australopithecus Boise, or no site, Ethiopia. Excavations led by White Coppins Photo J. Oster, Museum de Leon Call. 429. Plate 17.7 Skull of Homo habilis National Museum of Kenya. Plate 17.8 A Skull of Homo erectus from Chaukashi N. Reconstruction Photo J. Oster, Museum de Leon Call. 430. Plate 17.8 B Skull of Homo erectus C Plate 17.8 A Backslash Asterisk Plate 17.9 Reconstruction of the environment in which Homo erectus lived at Chaokao Cn, China 40000000 years ago Drawing by Gaylard and Burton Khmai Museum de Leon Call Plate 17.10 Skull of Australopithecus Africanus Young person on the right tongue Botswana adult on the left Sturt von Leon, Transvaal photos Y Coppins, Museum de Leon Call. Plate 17. 1 1 Reconstruction of Adiropithecus and Believe. Plate 17.12 Skeleton E slash Adiropithecus and Believe, 12 million years old, found on the Grosseto site, Tuscany, by Johannes Hirtzeller in 1958. Photo J. Oster, Museum de Leon Call. 432. Plate 17.13 Skull O slash Chromanoid of a Falu, Algeria Photo J. Oster, Museum de Leon Call. Plate 17.1 For Reconstruction of Skull of Rama. Pithisus Photo J. Oster, Museum de Leon Call. Plate 17.15 The Afar Site, Ethiopia, Expedition Led by M. Type, Y. Coppins and D. C. Johansson Photo M. Type, Museum de Leon Call. 433. Plate 17.16 The Orno Sites and Paleontolog Tirkel Excavations During the I-969 French Expedition Led by White Coppins Photos Y Coppins, Museum de Leon Call. 434. Plate 17.17 The Old Away Gorge, Tanzania, Excavations Led by L. and M. Leakey Photos Y Coppins, Museum de Leon Call. 435. Plate 17.18 Excavation Site at Old Away Photo J. Chabay alone, Museum de Leon Call. Plate 17.19 Detail of the surface of the soil at the Old Away. Excavations Photo J. Chabay alone, Museum de Leon Call. Plate 17.20 Close up of the surface of the soil at the Old Away. Excavations The bone of a hippopotamus and some polyhedrons are visible. Photo J. Chabay alone, Museum de Leon Call. African fossil M. E. N. R. Leaky. Africa, the cradle of mankind. Charles Darwin was the first scientist to publish important scientific comments on the study of evolution and he made remarks about the ancestry of man. It was Darwin who first pointed to Africa as the home of man, and during the past hundred years research has shown how correct he was. And the NY aspects of Darwin's pioneering work have been substantiated and to consider evolution merely as a theory is no longer realistic. The evidence for man's development in Africa is incomplete, but over the past decade there has been a substantial increase in the number of fossil specimens available for study and interpretation. There is good evidence to suggest that Africa was the continent on which M.E.N. made his first appearance and later developed upright, bipedal gait as a component of his technological adaptation. There is considerable interest in the question of when and by what processes man was able so to adapt. The AT evolutionary period is long and many phases in the evolution of man may not in fact be represented by fossil specimens because these occur only in quite specific conditions. For a fossil to be formed, there have to exist geological conditions where sedimentation is rapid and where the chemical composition of the soils and groundwater is such that mineral replacement can occur. Fossils so formed lie buried deep in the accumulated sediment and may never be found by modern MBN except where nature has taken a hand through erosion and earth movements. Such sites are few and far between and while new fossil pairing localities are being reported each year, much of Africa will never produce fossil evidence of the appearance of man. It is of interest to comment on the reasons why parts of Africa are so rich in prehistoric evidence. There are several points here and the first of these reflects the diversity of habitat in Africa. The H.E. continent is vast, 
spanning the equator and extending into temperature zones to the north and south. This fact alone accounts for the variety in climates but Africa offers a further dimension of highlands in the equatorial region. The land mass rises from a coastal belt through a series of plateaus up to mountain ranges and peaks. Methodology and African Prehistory Some of which still hold snow despite the fact that the climate is quite dry and hot. These various elevations provide different environments since they are progressively cooler as altitude is increased. These factors have always existed in Africa and while climatic changes certainly occurred, Africa seems always to have offered a suitable habitat. WHE in a particular area became too warm or too cold, migration to more propitious environments was possible. In contrast, in the temperate area of the world, the onset of cold weather conditions in a glacial period resulted in vast tracts of land being ice-bound and thus inhospitable to life with only a few specialized exceptions. It has been suggested that the glacial ice age periods of the northern Casablanca copy write them A-K-A-P-A-N-S-G-A-T underscore S-W-A-R-E-K-R-A-N-S-T-A-U-N-G-O-S-T-E-R-K-F-O-N-T-I-E-I-N-K-R-O-M-D-R-A-V-I Figure 18 I-Africa Important hominid sites 438 African fossil man Hemisphere can be correlated with wet periods in Africa since there appear to have been major fluctuations in the lake levels which reflect variations in rainfall. There has been considerable research into this in recent years and while a glacial advance would presumably have a global effect on weather, a specific correlation seems unlikely. One despite this, the accumulation of sediments in African lake basins during the period known as the Pleistocene supports the view that Africa enjoyed heavier rain during that period. This high rate of sediment deposition has been important. And the end why of the lakes in the African Pleistocene were small and shallow, probably seasonal in character with water level fluctuations each year reflecting the tropical weather patterns where, for a few months, rain is heavy and the remainder of the year dry. These lakes were ideal for sediment catchment and the annual flooding of the shallow basins provided conditions for sedimentation to stretch over the flat shores and around the mouths of inflowing rivers that overspilled their banks during high water. Remains of animals that had died, from whatever cause, near the lake shores were thus often buried in the sands and silts deposited during flooding. This process was continuous for millions of years and animal remains were trapped at different levels in sediment accumulations that might eventually exceed 500 meters in thickness. As the lake silted up and rainfall patterns changed, some basins dried up while new ones were formed. The H.E. process of fossilization is slow but the plies to seen extends over more than 2 million years of time and throughout this long period, as well as before and since. Animal remains were being embedded in sediment suitable to the formation of fossils. The HE location of these remains is of course a major problem for the paleontologist but here again factors in Africa, especially Eastern Africa, have contributed in such a way as to mitigate the difficulty. During the Pleistocene, and in particular during the latter part of this period, Eastern Africa experienced a period of earth movements associated with a weakness in the earth's crust that is today called the Rift Valley. These earth movements caused faulting and, in many places, the uplifting of blocks of sediment. Subsequent erosion has exposed strata in which fossils were formed and the search for fossil remains is usually concentrated in ancient lake basins where sedimentary formations have been faulted and exposed as badlands. There are exceptions and the very important collection of hominid remains from southern Africa is a case in point. These fossils were formed in limestone caves where the accumulation of bones was buried in cave fill and collapsed cave fill and collapsed cave roof. The bones were brought into the caves by several agencies and the most likely were scavengers and predators such as leopards and hyenas. There is some evidence to show that early man also occupied the caves and would therefore be responsible for some of the 1. See Chapter 17 above 439 Methodology and African Prehistory Bone debris subsequently fossilized. The problem of cave sites of this kind is that there is virtually no detail of stratification and it is consequently difficult to determine the relative age of the fossils recovered. In many parts of Africa during the Pleistocene, conditions were not suitable for the fossilization of animal remains. Consequently, while there may be no evidence for the existence of early MBN in most parts of Africa, there is no reason to suppose that he did not range widely on the continent. Continued search and the white yet reveal new sites. 
more C O M M O N than fossil remains are stone implements. These are generally more durable and stone does not have to be rapidly buried in appropriate sediments to ensure its preservation. Consequently, archaeologists have assembled a wealth of data on early human technology in Africa that tells us a great deal about the appearance of man. M E N, or more specifically, the genus Homo, might well be considered the only animal able to make stone implements but here, as in other areas of research related to the origin of man, there are various professional opinions which differ. The study of man's origin relies heavily on the interdisciplinary approach, investigation into more than fossil bones. Geology, paleoecology, paleontology, geophysics and geochemistry are important and, in the later stages where M. E. N. had begun to use artifacts, archaeology becomes of major importance. The study of living primates, including man, is often useful to a more complete understanding of the prehistory of this planet. Fossils of the family of man, the hominidae, can be shown as distinct and separate from the apes, the pongidae, from the present day all the way back in time to the Miocene period more than 14 million years ago. This earliest evidence of an is incomplete and there remains a large gap in our knowledge of man's development between 14 million and a little more than 3 million years ago. It was during this period that the final stages of adaptation appear to have started because from 5 million years ago onwards several forms of fossil hominids are known. The HE fossil record of animal groups other than MBN is sometimes better known with more complete material. This record is important and it is possible to attempt the reconstruction of early you might need ecology during the early evolutionary periods. Major adaptive changes and the Y reflect the response to cataclysmic events affecting the environment and there is already an indication of several important periods when many animals underwent fairly rapid change, presumably as a response to environmental pressures. It has been shown that in the end passed through various stages before becoming large brain and fully bipedal as he is today. At certain points in time, there existed more than one type of men and each seems to represent a specific adaptation. The HE changes from the very early ape-like form of the Miocene hominid must reflect specialization or adaptation of some kind and our concern is to understand the nature of these changes. The HE available evidence is far from complete but some details of the complex situation are. 440. African Fossil Man. Known. W.E. shall start by examining the most recent fossils and work our way backwards to the oldest. Contemporary man and Homo sapiens. A typical dictionary definition of man is far from satisfactory. H U M E N being the human race, adult male, individual male person. One of the problems in definition is that modern man is perhaps the most diverse single species known. There are so many differences, behavioral and physical, to be documented between extant populations around the world. Are these important? In some matters, they may be. But the purpose here is to stress that regardless of superficial differences, MEN today is of one species and all men have a C-O-M-M-O-N origin and common early developmental history. It is probably only in the past few thousand years that man has been influenced by superficial differences, and let us hope that this knowledge will speed up his recognition of his C-O-M-M-O-N identity and purpose. MEN belongs to the Homo sapiens species, and can today exist in a remarkable variety of habitats. In each instance this has been made possible by the technological extension to behavior. Life in crowded cities contrasts with nomads who herd camels in the desert, as do both with hunting people living deep in the rain forests of West Africa. MEN can live for long periods under the sea in submarines and is capable of orbiting the Earth in space capsules. Adaptation through technology is the key in each instance. A large complex brain together with fully manipulative hands which are freed from any locomotor function are the basic physical requirements. Evidence for the large brain, manipulative hands and bipedal gait can be traced back in time, as can the durable elements of man's technological activity. The degree of brain expansion, manipulative skill and bipedalism may well prove to be the best yardstick to use when tracing our species to its origins. In Africa, there have been several important discoveries that illustrate the presence of primitive Homo sapiens on the continent for more than I who years. There is every indication that our species has been present in Africa as long as elsewhere and further research may enable a precise date to be placed on the earliest record which may prove to be close on to 0000 years ago. In 1921, 
The skull and some skeletal remains were found at Broken Hill, Zambia. And because the country was formerly known as Northern Rhodesia, the specimen became known as Rhodesian MBN or Homo sapiens rhodesiensis. The date of about 35,000 years ago has been suggested and the specimen is certainly within the range for our species. This important fossil may perhaps be much older but it is not possible to date the skull itself. It bears close affinities with the Neanderthal material from Europe and it is most likely an African example of the Smorpha species. Even earlier evidence for Homo sapiens has been recovered from East Africa. In 1932, the late Dr. L. S. V. Lee Key recovered parts of two skulls from a site called Kanjarod in western Kenya. The HE fossils seem to be associated with 44. Methodology and African Prehistory With a late middle Pleistocene fossil fauna and this implies an age of close to 200,000 years. The HE site has not yet been accurately dated, which is unfortunate, as the two skull parts and a fragment of femur appear to be examples of Homo sapiens and may well represent the oldest evidence known at present for the species in Africa. In 1967, parts of two individuals were recovered from a site in the Orno Valley of southwest Ethiopia. The specimens consist of a partial skull and a fragment of skeleton and the calot of a second skull. Both fossils were from strata that suggest an age of a little more than 100,000 years. The locality of the Oembo Valley is probably better known for earlier fossils but there are extensive fairly recent deposits which hold promise of a further wealth of information on early Homo sapiens in Africa. In addition, there are sites reported in the same area from which early pottery has been noted, and in view of the prehistoric link between the Oembo and the Nile River systems, further research may result in further information on the early use of earthenware vessels. While early Homo sapiens is poorly represented in the fossil collections, it seems reasonable to assume that the species was widely scattered both in Africa and elsewhere on the globe. Pre-I slash Homo sapiens there is always a tendency to relate early species to modern species and this must be confined to the terms of a broad relationship. It is proposed here to consider the origin of I Homo sapiens within a lineage that can be traced back in time for several million years. At different points in time, there probably existed several morphologically distinct models within the lineage, and the genetic composition of modern man must reflect, in part, elements from this diverse heritage. The naming of fossil species is difficult and often confusion arises from the need to give a label to a particular specimen. The usual practice is to place similar specimens into one species, minor differences providing a basis for species differentiation while major differences are grounds for generic differentiation. The paleontologist's problem is to consider, over a period of time, evolutionary changes which have affected a particular species which may have experienced rapid adaptation. In this account, the term morpha species will be used to describe fossils that are alike in physical characteristics. It should here be noted that much of the controversy that is associated with the study of man's origin results from differing views on the use of terminology. Within the hominidae at least two genera and several species have been identified in the fossil record of the past three million years and these forms are the basis for understanding the origin of our own species. Until recently it was thought that evolution had occurred at a uniform rate, but it now appears that local populations of a given species may have responded to. 442. African Fossil Man Selective Pressures Differently Apparently primitive forms can be found contemporary with advanced or progressive forms. The identification of primitive characters in a species that is recorded over a long period of time is less difficult than the same exercise in a limited sample. It is possible to identify trends and adaptations which help to explain the process by which survival through progressive modification has occurred. The fossil record of man in Africa shows two major groupings of characters. It is proposed to consider these as lines of development or evolutionary lineages in which one lineage represented by the genus Homo can be traced through to the present, the other, represented by the genus Australopithecus, apparently becoming extinct approximately a million years ago. It is also possible to consider primitive forms recorded from deposits in which more advanced forms previously known from older deposits are not recorded. This might be seen as evidence for a retrogression but it is more probable that the continuation of a progressive species is not represented in the specimens available for study for no other reason than that it occupied areas where remains were not preserved through fossilization. For the purpose of this chapter, 
it is proposed to consider man prior to Homo sapiens on the basis of the two lineages. The form which was ancestral to both cannot be readily identified since the fossil evidence is so fragmentary. The earliest African evidence for the family hominidae is from Arturnan in Carrion where a number of fragments of upper jaw, a part of the lower jaw and some dental fragments have been recovered. This site has been dated at 14 million years. The fossil evidence shows that at this time the differentiation between the hominidae and the thongidae had already occurred. The four Turnan fragments show that the reduction of the canine, a diagnostic feature of the hominidae, had progressed some way from the typical ape situation. The fossil record between 14 and 3 to 5 million years is very incomplete since there are only for specimens which can be related to this period. These are a very badly damaged fragment of mandible from KNM in Carrion, recovered by the late BRL. S.B. Leakey in 1932, a fragment of mandible with one tooth crown preserved from Lothagum, Kenya, and an isolated molar tooth from Hanjora, Kenya. The first three specimens are from deposits dated at between 4 and 5 to 5 million years while the isolated tooth is considered to be from deposits dated at 9 million years. None of these specimens throws much light on the problem because they are too fragmentary. The mandibular fragment from Lothagum has been related to Australopithecus, but at this stage any degree of positive identification is considered unwarranted by a number of anthropologists. The sample of fossil hominid remains is considerably larger from the onset of the Pliocene era, and between about 4 million years ago to the first appearance of Homo sapiens, there exist substantial data on human evolution in Africa. Since 1973, new word has been initiated at two localities where 443 Methodology and African Prehistory Large numbers of fossils have been recovered from deposits dating between 3 and 4 million years. These sites, Lito Al Tanzania and Hadar Ethiopia deserve some specific comments in relation to the fossil evidence for the earliest record of Homo. The Lito Al site is situated some 50 kilometers south of the famous Old Away Gorge, on the slopes of the Lemagrud Hills overlooking the northern end of Lake Iasi. The HE date for this locality is about 3-5 million years which is of particular interest because the various fossils of early hominid from here have been proposed as falling within the category of Homo. The HE material consists of jaws and teeth and the occasional element of limb. The Hadar site in the Afar region of Ethiopia is about the same age or slightly younger. The wealth of material has been recovered from this site since 1973 and includes excellent specimens of both the cranial and postcranial skeleton. A distinction can be made between three types relating to Homo habilis, Australopithecus gracilis and Australopithecus robustus. While we know virtually nothing of the early hominid forms prior to 3 asterisk 5 million years, since those that are recorded do not provide any important answers to the origin of either Homo or Australopithecus, the period of time between 3 and 1 million years is relatively well represented in the fossil record in Africa. The relatively large sample of material and OW available from sites dated from less than 3 million years shows that there were two distinct genera of early hominids often occupying the same area. These two forms, Homo and Australopithecus, presumably occupied different ecological niches and while their physical territory may have overlapped, the competition for food was apparently not sufficient for one form to exclude the other. There remains a great deal to be learned about the adaptation of each hominid and, at present, the coexistence of the two genera for a period in excess of 1 to 5 million years has been established and attests to the distinctiveness of the two. W.E.X. Australopithecus ancestral to Homo This question used to be answered in the affirmative but with the new data it is no longer certain, and some workers including the author tend toward the view in which both forms have a C.O.M.M.O. an ancestor distinct from both. T.O. established such a contention. It is necessary to examine the two genera in terms of their special adaptations and consider the rate of change, if any, in each group. Before this can be done, it is essential to define clearly the characteristics that are diagnostic of each, and that are consistent through time. Lastly, W.E. may note that some researchers group all these fossils under the same genus, which could be said to display significant intrageneric variability and marked sexual dimorphism. The genus Homo presepiens Homo erectus the best known presepiens form though I Homo is that which has been attributed to a wide-ranging, diverse morphospecies known as Homo erectus. This 444
North African fossil man. Species was first recognized from material recovered from sites in the Far East and China, but in comparatively recent years the same form has been collected in North and Eastern Africa and maybe in Southern Africa. There are no firm dates for the Asian collections although an inferred age for some material has been published, and it would seem that Homo erectus is recorded from sites that are between 1 to 5 million and 0 to 5 million years old. The dating of the North African sites that have yielded Homo erectus is also inferred and terms such as Middle Pleistocene have been used. The material from East Africa has been recovered from sites where dating is possible and the earliest example is placed at just over I 6 million years. The very early record of this form in Eastern Africa is indicative of an African origin, and many scholars accept the contention that the Homo erectus populations beyond the African continent are migrant populations that originated in Africa during early Pleistocene times. Nevertheless, there are a number of extremely early new dates for the Homo erectus of Javit. At the present time, there is not an abundance of material upon which comprehensive studies can be made. There is, however, sufficient data to show that this species was widely distributed in Africa as well as occurring in Asia and in Europe. The H.E. Lim material indicates a fried posture with adaptation for striding, bipedal gait that was close in character to that seen in modern man. The H.E. degree of intelligence can be roughly assessed by estimating the cranial capacity the volume of the brain case. From the known material, the endocranial volume can be shown to range from some 750 cc to a large 1000 cc for Homo erectus, while the average Homo sapiens is significantly greater at 1400 cc. The technology used by Homo erectus can be inferred from his remains. It seems that Homo erectus made and used stone implements and lived as a hunter flash gatherer on the open savannas of Africa. The H.E. consensus of professional opinion links the hand axe for Ashwantli and industry to Homo erectus. This type of stone tool industry is distinctive and represented by sites in Africa, Europe and to a lesser extent in Asia. Whether Homo erectus was the final stage of development leading to Homo sapiens remains uncertain and it is probably wise to leave the matter open pending further information on this species. Before leaving Homo erectus, the characteristics of the species should be briefly discussed. The H.E. most diagnostic features are seen in the scope, the heavy, protruding eyebrow ridges the low forehead and the shape of the back part of the skull. The teeth may be diagnostic but it is possible that different morpha species within the Homo lineage might have very similar dental morphology. Similarly, the mandibular morphology may be less distinctive than presently thought and some alleged Homo erectus specimens that consist only of teeth and jaws might, in fact, represent a different morpha species within the same genus. 445. Methodology and African Prehistory the genus Homo presepi and Homo habilis material attributed to the Homo lineage but distinctive and occur in earlier than Homo erectus i.a. confined to eastern Africa. The H.E. earliest forms are those from Hadar and Litolol which have yet to be studied in detail but which almost certainly are ancestral to later species. The H.E. intermediate species, if that is what it is, could perhaps be termed Homo habilis and is based upon material from Old Away and, more recently, from Kubiflora on the east side of Lake Urkana. The principal characteristics of I Homo habilis would be the relatively large brain, the cranial capacity value exceeding 750 cc, thin bonded skulls which are high vaulted and show minimal post-orbital contraction. The HE anterior teeth are relatively large with moderately large molars and premolars and the mandible shows external buttressing. The postcranial elements show morphological features that are very similar to modern man. The best examples of Homo habilis are from Kubifora where several cranial specimens, mandibles and limb bones are known. The H.E. most complete skull is that referred to as K&M, the R 1470 plate 18.4. Australopithecus cubics The problem of species definition with Australopithecus is far from settled, but I am of the opinion that evidence for two species of this genus can be established with some conviction in the Kubifora formation. The H.E. most obvious, Australopithecus boise is very distinctive, being characterized by hyper-robust mandibles, large molars and premolars relative to the anterior dentition, cranial capacity values less than 550 cc, and sexual dimorphism manifested in superficial cranial characters such as sagittal and nuchal crests in males plate 18.1. The H.E. known postcranial elements, such as the femur, humerus and talus, are also distinctive. This widespread species has been reported from other localities, such as Chasotinj, P. 
Penania and rolled away gorge in the southern rift valley of East Africa. 8. Boise and the white require reconsideration as a full species and should instead perhaps be ranked as a subspecies as a deem of the South African form of a robustus. Additional data are needed if WE are going to solve the problems that are always associated with such refined systematics in vertebrate paleontology. Consequently the retention of two wide but spatially separate robust species seems desirable for the moment. The case for aggressive East African species of Australopithecus is less secure, but there seems to be too great a degree of variation if all the material is included as a single species. The best example of a gressel form from East Africa would be the specimen from Kubi Fora Formation, OH5 Plate 18.1. Various mandibles and some postcranial elements might also be included, keeping in mind the difficulty of 446. African Fossil Man Classifying Mandibles Then no detailed proposal for such a clas slash scheme for the East African fossils has been put forward but the typical characteristics would include gracile mandibles with small cheek teeth, cranial capacity values at 600 cc or less and sagittal crests rare or non-existent. The postcranial morphology appears to be similar to that seen in A. Boise, although on a smaller and less robust scale. In both species, one of the most distinctive features is the proximal region of the femur, a long femoral neck is compressed from front to back, and there is a small, subspherical head. There are other features, but very little is known about variation, and the sample is not impressively large at present. I consider this species to be closely allied to the Gracilae. Africanus from South Africa, it may be a more northern beam of that species. The H.E. Inominate bone is known for eight. Africanus and for eight. Robustus in South Africa, and slight differences have been noted between the two forms. Then the anomalous remains are attributable to Australopithecus from East Africa, but Homo is represented by two specimens that are equivalent in time and they illustrate marked differences between the two genera that are greater than would reasonably be expected for a single, albeit spatially extended species.